Hi, in the last section, we looked at types. The important thing to remember from that is how each function can have multiple implementations called methods, handling arguments of different types. In this section, we'll get into a more practical issue, which is how we communicate with the outside world, how we can read and write data to files or the network. This is one of the areas I think Julia really shines and which convinced me that Julie has a bright future in areas other than just scientific computing. A lot of the popularity of languages like Perl, Python, and Ruby have been in relation to the ease with which they can handle I.O. and text processing, which is also a strong area for, which are also strong areas for Julia. Let's move to the first video in this section where we'll look at how you can read and write to files. We'll basically cover three different areas. The dead simple convenience functions for quickly reading something from a file. How reading and writing works under the hood. And finally, the most practical and flexible way of reading and writing to files, which we will probably use most of the time. If we write read and hit tab, you can see there are a lot of different functions for reading. Read line, which allows us to read a single line, or read lines, which allows us to write to read multiple lines, for instance. Read this file here, I'm going to show you. So it's a file I have, a text file that I have the elements or some of the elements. Uh, so uh, for each line, I have the atomic number, the name, the symbol, and the atomic mass. So let's just read that. I'm stored in S, read string, and then remember we have the completion. So when I start writing elements, I can just hit tab and get that completed. And just to check that we actually got this read properly, we can just print it out. This is a convenience function. And to understand how the Julia I.O. system works, we have to look more at how the low-level functions work and how we can combine them to meet our various needs. So like any language, we start with opening a file and getting a reference. So we have open elements. And while this is default to read it, I'm just spelling it out now. So this R means that we want to read a file. So usually what we return is a file descriptor or a stream. And in Julia's case, we're operating on streams. So I'm going to store this in a variable called stream. And you can see that what we get back is IO stream, which is a concrete subclass of of the abstract IO. So let's use this uh, stream to read a single line. And another, so we, you can see that we progress through the file. At any point, we can use the end of file function to check whether we're done. It says false, so we have still more to read. And we can check how many bytes we have read thus far, so how far we are into the file. So 62 bytes. And I'm, to just illustrate this, I'm going to read a single byte by specifying that I'm going to read from the stream. And then with read, I can say what type I want to read. And I'm saying I want to read a chart. So I read the atomic number for helium here. And now if I use position, you can see that I advance by 1 to 63. Let's read another line so that I can try to read the number part again. 
So we're, we're getting now to the, um, if you remember what the file looks like, I'm going to just cap that. So you see that I'm getting to lithium. So if we read the first character, or rather we're going to just demonstrate that he used different types. We're going to read this as an int 8. Um, this is probably a bit confusing, but you probably understand why you got that result if you're trying to make a character of it. So what we actually read was the ASCII code. So there's no parsing going on here. Uh, so this is intended if you're reading sort of the raw numbers from the file. And of course we can use read string to read the rest of the file. And now if we call end of file, you should see that we reach the end. And it's important to remember when we're operating on files in this manner that we call close to close the file. Of course, remembering to call close is rather annoying. That's about as fun as remembering to free allocated memory. If we look at the help for open, you will get the clue that there's a way around this. So let's just look at open. When looking at this, uh, you got to remember that these various ways is written here also deals with many of the different ways you can argument. So when it says command here, that's probably confusing. And that's because you can actually provide a shell command that you want to read the output from. So don't let that confuse you. What you're interested in is farther down. So these ones were the deal with file name. In our case, we want to look at this way of writing it. So basically we're using the same arguments that we would normally do, except we have this other argument in the beginning, taking a function object. And what it says here is that it will close the resulting file descriptor up on completion. So that's exactly the kind of behavior we want. And there's even an example of doing this here. So you see it uses a read string. So let's just let me try to explain what's going on here with some examples. So say I'm calling open and I'm going to call with the read line elements. You can see what happened is that I opened the file and I got the first line. <clears throat> and we can use a read string as in the example. In fact, this is how read string, uh, which takes a file name argument, is implemented. We can we can look at this uh, quickly with the the uh, edit macro, which is very handy for this sort of thing. In fact, this is how read string taking a file name argument is implemented, and thanks to the um, cool edit macro, we can look at this ourselves. So we're going to imagine that we were calling ReadString with a file name argument. What, so edit is going to give us what code would be executed then. So what we can see here is that ReadString is implemented using open, passing ReadString as an argument. So you can see all of these various read functions taking a file name's argument are really just convenience functions calling open like this. There's also a function for reading multiple lines which take a stream. So you can do open read lines elements. And we could even define our own function, which takes a stream as an argument. So let's do my read. And we're 
got to say that it takes a stream as argument. And we're just going to read a single character. And now it's possible to pass that to open. So there you see, we opened the file, read a single character, and closed it. There's nothing uh, magical about how this works. If we do edit again, copy that. You can see the way it's implemented is that we call the regular open and then on the stream we call the function that we pass as an argument here and then when that's done we call close so pretty simple in a more larger or more realistic example this is however not how we would usually read files instead we use the do end form for creating anonymous functions. I done this um, once or twice before so this will be some repetition. So I'll show you. So open remember the first argument here should be the way we're going to be using it should be a uh, function object. But when we're doing the the do end form we would skip the first argument so you see what we're doing here is I'm opening the file and then this becomes a function I'm passing in and the function has one of the arguments is going to be stream and then we're iterating over each of the lines we're using this new function here called each line for that and then we're just going to print them out so there you have the function or there you have the output so this is basically syntactic sugar for writing something like this. So for f stream and then I could just repeat this part here and then to open f so this is exactly the same. So rather than putting the f here we get the do end at the end. So this allows us to sort of simulate our own kind of control structures. So if you want to utilize this in your own functions, make sure you take your function object as the first argument of your function. Otherwise, the do form won't work. I didn't really cover the um, the each line function. So let's just look at the help system. Uh, so you can see that it can take a stream as an argument. And what it does is it creates an iterable object. I haven't covered those yet, and I will that later. But basically, for now, it's okay to know that an iterable object is something that is required by a for loop, for instance, to be able to iterate over something. So for instance, an array is an example of an iterable ob object, and so is a, a range like three, two, eight, for instance. We haven't talked much about writing, and that, that'll be the last topic. There's not as much to say about writing, so this will be quite short. Sure. The, the most simple way of doing that would be just write a file name, and Julie will understand a lot of different data types. So it will understand that I'm trying to write a string here. So if we do uh, cat, if 
foo bar, you can see that it contains that. So of course, we can try to write a different type, say a number. Of course, that would be confusing because we're just writing them raw and then this is getting interpreted as text. So it doesn't seem that same. So you probably want to have a string parsing or turning this into a string in the normal case. And again, the most flexible case with for dealing with any of these things is using open together with the to end form. So let's let's try that out. Creating a file named alpha and I write to. So when I'm specifying a W here rather than an R, uh, it will create a file and if it already exists, it will truncate it before writing to it. By truncate, I mean clearing the file first. If you want to append to it, you would have to put an A in there instead. And if you wanted to also be able to read from it, you would have to put A+. But these should be familiar to you if you've been programming C, possibly also Perl, I'm not sure which languages use these conventions. And then so we do the do form stream. Or we can do what they do in the Julico and just write IO. So for some character and I'm gonna write the alphabet here. So I'm gonna go from A to Z and then we're gonna write to our stream the character. And at the end, we'll write a new line. Okay, so let's check that out. So if I change the um, the to an A here, you can see that I add another line. And if I use the W again, you can see that we're overwriting the file. So let's conclude. There was no way for me to cover everything about files. For instance, I didn't really cover standard in standard out. You can write them like this. And they were basically work like regular files. That's because the important thing here really was understanding how the IO system works because you can look up a lot of these details yourself with the help system. Use the functions I taught you earlier about how to inspect the type system so that you can see um, what IO types exist, for instance. And you know, just use tab to see available functions. So the first thing I showed you was that you could read and write directly uh, just specifying a file name so this is for a lot of simple cases this is what you're going to do it's a very easy way of doing it of course internally all of this is implemented using streams and finally i showed you how we can use open together with the um, do end form at the end of the function call which is the most versatile way of working with files